Hello my beautiful people, thanks so much for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Goretti and I am the counselor at Butterfly Project. So today I kind of wanted to talk more about this topic of our heart and our heart space and heart intelligence. Um, there is something called heart math as well. So basically about the energy regarding our heart and how when we have an open heart, um, like I had mentioned in my last video, that is kind of opening up the gates to our creativity, um, you know, to joy, to happiness, to so many different things, right? Um, so I wanted to just talk a little bit more about this because I didn't mention it in that video. It would have been way too long. Um, there is something called, you know, the Hawkins scale of vibration. This is about, um, our emotional vibration. Okay. So our emotional frequency, kind of like I was saying, and if you watch that other video, you know, a radio tower is getting, giving off those signals. Our heart gives off this, you know, kind of a vibration vibration as well, this frequency. And that's why we can kind of feel other people's, you know, energy or what they're feeling when we're, you know, a, a couple feet away from them, because we have this kind of, you know, sphere around us of like an energy field, right? And this is coming from our heart space. So the Hawkins scale of emotional vibration. Okay, this was actually created to kind of show this. They tested it. There's, I don't know what they used to test it, but you can research that if you want. I'm not going to dive deep into that here. Um, but you can kind of, you know, notice like a spiral. Okay, so if you can think of a cylinder um, and, you know, that it comes, you know, with the pointy point side down um, and the widest point is at the top. Think of it as a cylinder. You can also think of it or like an upside down pyramid. You can think of it as actually like a spiral going upwards in that same shape of that upside down, you know, pyramid. And if you look it up, you'll see like so many different ways they show it. But at the very bottom, so if you kind of think about that, it's like the bottom is very narrow and the top is open wide, okay? And so in the middle, if you kind of break it down, uh, put a line through the middle, that would be feeling neutral, okay? So we're gonna talk about these feelings. The middle is neutral and above that line is love and below the line is fear. Okay, so if we're in a state or feelings of fear, our heart is definitely closed off. We know that. Okay, um, so if you look at, you know, kind of what is in these lower vibrations, lower frequencies for people, um, this is why people talk about your vibe, right? Um, you know, vibrations, regardless if you believe in, you know, any kind of metaphysical stuff, it doesn't really matter. This, you know, science has already kind of proven these things, but if, you know, and psychology, but if you are residing in that state of fear, there are things like pride, anger, um, a fear, of course, right? There's grief. Apathy actually falls within that because when we're kind of like bored or just apathetic, like we just don't really care, um, you know, that's not a great place to be either, right? Um, and then at the very bottom is actually shame, okay? That is probably the worst state to be in, okay? Um, and this kind of coincides with, you know, things that happened in our childhood, right? You know, if we were shamed for things, this is why those kinds of things in childhood and in that, you know, I call it, you know, childhood programming in our subconscious mind, those things can block our heart off. And that's why it's important to do things like working with a counselor and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so yeah, so I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about that. And so when we're talking about the heart intelligence, that heart energy, our heart space, if we go above the neutral, you know, line, um, neutral is better than being in a state of fear. So sometimes if we're not feeling great, it's better to get us to a place of neutrality first. Um, at least if we can stay in that space, it's better than going below the line okay into that fear state all right so above the neutral line is love that would be the next one okay so love there's other things actually there's um 
I think it's like acceptance and there's some other things. Um, but I'm going to start with love. So love and there are also uh, numbers associated to all of these. Okay. So I believe the highest is like 700, the lowest shame. I can't remember if it was like 10 or something like that. Just to give you guys an idea, Hitler was around like 30 on the scale. So that would be kind of like, um, apathy, not surprising. <laughs> um, but, uh, so yeah, so there's love and then there's peace and I believe love is 500. So peace is next and then there's joy and then there's enlightenment and so this is why meditating is so important it is to get our heart and our mind mind in alignment right and this is when we're opening up to whatever you believe higher self spirit universe consciousness god whatever you just insert what works for you okay um and that sense of enlightenment is kind of, you know, people talk about it being like euphoria and this is, you know, people going into like the Himalayan mountains and meditating and that kind of stuff. We don't need to do that to get to that place of enlightenment. I have been in that place of enlightenment many, many times and it takes though, you know, that, that daily work, it takes that choice every single day to kind of get to that place, okay? Um, so when we're talking about the heart space, you know, just think about that. When you're vibrating at a high number, at a high level on this scale, think of that cylinder shape, right? You are more open to possibilities. Now, this is also opening up your mind. This is opening up your heart. This is opening ourselves up to inspiration, to things that are going to bring us peace and joy and love and enlightenment. So we're way more open to that. When we're talking about metaphysical, right, we're talking about, you know, some other things, um, you're kind of opening yourself up to things like spiritual gifts and, and stuff like that. Um, and when we're talking about, you know, um, manifesting and remember, Remember, you guys, if you don't know a lot about manifesting, think about, um, you know, the universe or, you know, consciousness or whatever you want to believe, um, you know, even just our, our world, our atmosphere, just like gravity, we are constantly creating our own reality based on our thoughts and our beliefs and what is coming from our heart space, right? What energy are we putting out? Um, and so you know, when we're talking about manifesting, people have different, you know, ideas, law of attraction, law of assumption, um, you know, different things like that. They are all laws of the universe, just like gravity, whether you believe in them or not, it is still at play and it's still working. That's why people say, watch what you're thinking, watch what you believe, right? So, and when we're talking about vibration and frequency, people that believe in, you know, law of attraction kind of saying like, if you're vibing, right, high, if you notice this, test it out in your world, right? Test it out in your own life. When you're vibing high, what tends to happen? Things are going well. Everything flows. Things are just one thing after the other. You're like, wow, I'm just vibing high. I'm on a roll. Things are so good. The minute you wake up in the morning and, you know, you're like, oh, I stumped my toe on the bed and, you know, um, now my day's not going good and then something else happens and it's a downward spiral, spiral right? You know, so that's kind of why that happens. It's all based on our thoughts, which affect our emotions, our heart space, which affect our vibration, our frequency, what we're putting out there, right? Um, and so just think about the radio, you know, tower, right? The radio signal. It's kind of like if you're sitting in anger, let's say, well, you're tuning into that channel of anger. So guess what you're going to attract into your world, right? it's gonna be things under that neutral line. It's gonna be like negative stuff. It's not gonna be good. But if you are, regardless of what's going on around you, sitting in a place of love or peace or joy, right? Or enlightenment, if you can get there, guess what happens? Now you're, you're bringing in, you're tuning into that other channel that is going to bring in things that give you more peace, that give you more love, that give you more happiness, more joy, more enlightenment, right? 
So this is why it is so important to pay attention to what's going on in here. What is going on in your heart? I always say this statement and I can't remember where I had heard it from. Um, I think it might be something to do with Christianity, but I can't remember. So if you guys know, post it in the comments. But if you are sitting in a place of fear, you cannot be in a place of love. Okay, and when you're sitting in a place of love, you cannot be in a place of fear. Where there is love, there is no fear. Where there is fear, there's no love. All right? So it's important for us to really pay attention to what we're feeling. And if we are stuck in, you know, uh, below the neutral line, right? If we're stuck in that fear state or space, in that bottom part of, you know, the scale of the spiral, then it is important for us to do that internal work to get us out of that. And sometimes, yeah, it takes some deep work, working with a counselor, doing some, you know, maybe self-help stuff, really diving deep, going, you know, within, doing some healing work, whatever that is for you, um, whatever works for you. But sometimes it really just is, you know, a shift of perspective, okay? Um, so this is something that I do with my clients all the time. I don't always do the deep healing work because sometimes it's actually not even necessary. Sometimes people think like, I have to do all this deep healing and deep work. And I've noticed that sometimes people can, can get stuck in that. And I'm all about productivity. I'm all about propelling people forward and getting you better so you don't have to keep coming to see me. Um, and so in doing that, I don't want you to stay stuck in that that healing cycle okay because we can only do so much of that and then part the other part is shifting your perspective it's having a paradigm shift that is something i do all the time with my clients to shift you to have a paradigm shift and sometimes it's just really it's kind of like that snap out of it right sometimes that's what it takes maybe you've done some healing work and yet you're still going back to those old thoughts those old beliefs the old fears the old you know feelings of like anger or fear or shame or guilt sometimes if you've already done healing on that you got to snap out of it right if you allow that fear i also did a video on fear but if you allow the fear to step in and take over you're going to miss out you're going to miss out and after the past 10 days that i have had um, suffering with vertigo and it was quite severe for a good portion of it um, and I'm always preaching you know about health and how important it is and how each day you know um, is is a gift it truly is like you guys I lived it you know today I actually woke up feeling better and I like this is why I'm actually doing this video and so excited to do this but every day is a gift and we need to treat it that way so sometimes you have to ask yourself do i want to sit in this fear do i want to sit in these lower vibrational energies because that's just making me feel yuck right do i really want to sit in that sometimes yeah people like sitting in the on the pity pot people like sitting in that victim you know mentality and victim mode okay you know sometimes it feels good sometimes we have to do that i tell my clients this all the time no problem give yourself permission i give you permission to sit on the pity pot but give yourself a limit. One day, maximum two days, and then get off of the pity pot. Okay, get off of that and start working on increasing your vibration. Now, what helps us get into that love state? Okay, the higher vibrational, you know, um, energies. What gets us into love and peace and joy and enlightenment? You guys, I preach this all the time too, and to my clients. Science is already proven. We all have a spiritual side, okay? We have a spirit, whether you want to believe in it or not. Um, and if you want to call it your inner self, your higher self, doesn't matter. Consciousness, doesn't matter. You need to spend time with that person, that you, that inner you, that spiritual you, the inner child, if you want to call it that too. Okay, you need to spend that time. You need to go within and you need to get out of your ego state and you need to go into your heart space. One of the best ways to do this, of course, is meditation. This is why people push that so much. Meditation is really great, but it's not the only thing. I, I go for these like really special long drives. I tell all my clients about it. Most of you that know me know about this. Um, it is the most special time for me. It's my therapy. <laughs> you know, I go on these drives 
And when I'm driving and I'm, you know, seeing all this scenery and I'm playing music that really like, you know, vibes high with me, what ends up happening, you know, I've noticed I've been doing this for like 20 years, same drive. <laughs> um, and what I've noticed is I'll have these moments of like awakening, enlightenment, you know, downloads of like ideas and inspiration and excitement and creativity and, you know, just love coming out of me. And it's so funny because like people can actually feel that vibration from me. You know, there's a lot of joggers and people that are out and they're always like smiling and waving at me and stuff. And it, it's that vi vibration, you know, the frequency that I'm giving off, right? So, um, you know, and that usually gets me into that place of, of joy and peace and love and enlightenment, you know, sometimes or a lot of the time. But so what I'm saying is when you're, you know, get yourself to that neutral place. And then after that, you want to make sure that you are doing things that you really enjoy. What brings you joy? Is it music? Is it dancing? Is it cooking? Is it baking? Um, is it watching Netflix? You know, is it taking a nap? And I don't mean not watching Netflix in the way of like, we're all, you know, kind of just vegging a lot and doing that. I'm talking about like, if you're usually doing other things and you normally don't, you know, watch Netflix or a movie or, or things like that, then go ahead and do that if that brings you joy. So anything that brings you joy, maybe it's painting, maybe it's drawing, maybe it's, you know, doing jewelry or um, you know, some kind of artistic thing, you know, playing music, listening to music. Um, maybe it's spending time in nature. Maybe it's doing woodwork. Like, I don't know. The list goes on and on and on. Find things that bring you joy. Sometimes, yeah, it's hanging out with that friend or hanging out with your partner or, you know, with your child or your pet or whatever it is, right, with that family member. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, do something that brings you peace and joy and love and enlightenment and yes sometimes it includes other people but a lot of the time you know if you're doing it on a regular basis I'm talking about more doing things for you to spend time with that you that inner you that spirit you the higher self you the consciousness you okay yes you can meditate or you can do what I do like it's not like I have my eyes closed obviously I'm you know got my eyes open when I'm driving but when I'm driving, I get into that meditative state. It's that theta brain wave, uh, kind of like what you feel when you're just about to go to sleep, like just before. So that is a very meditative state. And that is a time where I process a lot of things. I have done so much of my healing on that drive. You guys, I also do meditations and, and other things, um, spiritual practices, any kind of rituals, those things, if they matter to you, if they bring you joy, do those, okay? Maybe it's working with plants, whatever it is, whatever brings you joy is going to help push you into that love state, into the peace, into the joy, into the enlightenment. I practice what I preach. I have done it time and time again. I know though that when we are not feeling well, it doesn't feel good, right? And it can put us maybe into those lower vibrations, but we can still, even when we're unwell, and I've experienced this, we can still get us ourselves to that place of neutrality. I, I mean, I'm vibing in that love, peace, joy on a regular daily basis. And because of that, because I've been practicing this for quite a while, but because of that, you know, even when I'm not well, um, I can still vibe in that I can still you know vibrate in those frequencies right so you guys that's kind of what I wanted to talk about it's you know when we're in that place of love when we're in that place of that vibrational frequency of those emotions those higher you know uh, frequency emotions we are going to bring better things into our life. Our, our heart is open. Our minds are more open. We can be more creative. We can have better relationships. We feel good. We enjoy things. Like when I, I know what it's like being in that fear state in those lower vibrations. And when I was in those states before, I remember it's really hard to look at life, you know, um, as bright and sunny and, and wonderful. Um, you know, and I've been in the higher states, uh, the higher frequencies, right? In that love state, even when I was going through such difficult times 
And that is actually what got me through was being in that. And so when I'm in that, you know, even though I was struggling with certain things, I could look at other people and be super happy for them and cheer other people on and support other people, you know, or help them or be emotionally, you know, supportive or there for them. I could do all of those things. I could still love people and I felt so much peace and joy because joy does not come from external, sorry guys, external sources, okay? Joy does not come from, um, you know, my pastor that uh, passed away, he used to say joy does not come from, you know, happiness or happenings. Joy comes from the inside, okay, you guys? It comes from the inner you. It comes from your heart. That is where joy comes from. And so when you're doing things that bring you joy, even if things outside of you aren't looking good, that helps to get you into that state. But when you're vibing in love and peace especially, you'll step into that joy so much easier. You don't have to have anything happening around you or that's making you happy you will just naturally feel joy inside of you. And to be honest, you guys, and I keep talking about this, but every single day is a gift. We don't know when our last day is. It truly is a gift. And that for me is enough to step into that place of joy and peace. Just waking up in the morning, I'm like, yes, I'm alive. <laughs> I get to experience another day on this planet thank you and that immediately puts me into joy and love and peace it's all about perspective okay i know there's deeper healing that needs to be done in our heart space but sometimes it's like you just got to make that shift that paradigm shift you just got to shift that focus shift how you view it lots of people out there are talking about this shifting your perspective how you view things that's going to get you into that state. And when you are vibrationally in a state of love, so all those higher frequencies, guess what? Amazing things happen. Things flow out of you. If you're a creative person, these things just flow right out of you. It is so incredible. It's beautiful to watch, to see, and to experience, of course. So many amazing things happen, okay? So many amazing things. I'm talking about everything, health, wealth, love, relationships, career, life purpose, all of these things will flow for you. Things get clearer for you. Remember, it's that, you know, that pyramid, right? So when you're stuck in those lower states, it's kind of like shrinking things for you. It is, it's um, kind of minimizing the op any opening for these things to come into your life, right? But the higher vibrational you are, it is completely that cylinder. It's the top of the cylinder. It's open. Okay. And that's how you bring those things in. All right, my loves. I hope that this was helpful for you. I really enjoyed doing this video. Um, this topic is really near and dear to my heart for so many reasons. And it is something that I teach, you know, my clients in sessions and stuff. Um, you know, at different levels and, and uh, for different situations. But um, hopefully this was helpful. And as always, you guys, please do all the things like, share, subscribe, comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. And um, as well, don't forget uh, to share this with anybody that you think it might be helpful for because that is the whole purpose of me doing these videos is to help as many people as I possibly can. That is my life purpose. I love my job. I love what I do. I love doing these videos as well. And you guys, as always, I wish you all peace, love, and light. Until next time. Bye-bye.